Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to create a fancy looking login screen in Jetpack Compose. So here I have Android Studio with new empty project, some dependencies like ExoPlayer, it's an open source media player that will be used to render the video, and resources like logo and video that will be displayed as an animated background. So let's build the app for the first time and let's start coding. I start with a simple column that holds all basic elements such as logo, input fields for username and password, buttons and text. Elements are aligned to the bottom and centered horizontally. There is an icon on the top. I use Painter Resource API to load the rasterized logo and tint it with the white color. Next, let's create a new composable for username and password text fields. The design will be very similar, just with slight changes. So the composable will contain some shared code later. Next, there will be a white rounded button with sign-in text. I will implement the onClick method later. For now, let's focus only on the design. So let's rebuild the screen to see how it looks. Add a thin, slightly transparent divider line to visually separate the sign-in and sign-up part of the screen. Let's check if there is enough padding. OK. And at the end, row holding text and sign up text button. Actually, strings should be also loaded from the resources and not be hard coded in the composables. I could show you how to do it properly in some of the future videos. Let's set up the app to display content edge to edge. I can achieve this behavior by editing Teams XML file. The difference will be more visible later when I change the background. Now let's focus on the text fields. I declare sealed class input type that I can later use as an input parameter for my composable. Input type contains two nested objects, name and password with predefined parameters, which I will use to set up text fields. As you can see, the parameters are label, icon, keyboard options and visual transformation. Now I set up name object using username as a label, some material design icon, keyboard options, which you will be able to see in the bottom right corner of the software keyboard, and no visual transformation is necessary. Similarly, for the password object, I use password label, lock icon, keyboard option appropriate for the password text field, and password visual transformation that will hide the original text and replace it with dots. I have to update the declaration of the text input composable function to use input type as a parameter and also the function calls in the code. Now I can use icon from the input type as leading icon of the text field and the label of the input type as a label of the text field and see how the design changed when the project was rebuilt. As you can see labels and icons work, but the shape and the background colors should be changed. I use another composable function text field colors that create default text field colors object with custom colors. This is not part of the input type because it's the same for both text fields. And now it looks much better. I must not forget the single line parameter and the rest of the input type properties such as keyboard options and visual transformation. Besides these parameters, I need to provide focus requester. It will be used to change focus to the next text input and keyboard action, where I specify action that will be triggered in response to IMI action on software keyboard. When this is done, let's scroll up back to the login composable, where I define focus requester and focus manager. Focus Manager will be used to clear focus and close software keyboard at the end. So let's implement this behavior into the right method of keyboard action object. Focus password field in 
on next action and clear focus in on done action. Let's build the app and test if everything works as expected. Hmm, <laughs> this doesn't seem to be right. But besides this small glitch, everything works. I implement small workaround by manually applying padding when software keyboard appears on the screen. Actually, after short investigation, I found out that the issue where the input field is sometimes partially covered by the software keyboard is actually a bug in Jetpack Compose, and it should be fixed in the latest version, so I could revert the fix after updating dependency. Ok, let's finally implement the video background. At first, I need the URI pointing to the video location. Video is saved in the resource directory, so I need to get the resource identifier and manually assemble this nice path with Android resource schema. Or maybe there is a better way to do it. But anyway, the method returns the location of the file that can be used as a parameter of login composable. Then I will need the exoplayer itself. Exoplayer instance can be created using exoplayer builder which provides a range of customizations. Let's create and set the media item consisting only of the stream URI that I have as a function parameter. Then repeat mode, set play when ready to true and call prepare player. The next one will be player view. It displays video, subtitles, playback controls and so on. But I actually don't need any of these fancy features, just pure video. Let's link the view with the player, set up layout parameters, remove any user controls and set the resize mode to make sure that the video will be always displayed without black strips. Then use context and build exoplayer instance inside remember method to make sure that the player will be instantiated just once during the composition. Exoplayer view is not composable but only classic Android view. To make it work here I need to wrap it inside Android view composable which can make Android view works inside Jetpack Compose world. And let's test it. And hmm, it doesn't work. But it looks like I made the typo in video URI. Now it works. But, as you may notice, nothing happens when I press the sign in button. Let's implement some dummy login function, providing at least some feedback to the user. This method will be called when the user clicks on the sign in button or triggers IMI keyboard action on the password text field. As this is only a UI demo, the method won't perform any real action, just display toast with an error message. Something like, something went wrong, please try it again later. Or just try it again later, to keep it short. Then I need to scroll down and find the side-in button, update the onclick listener and also password text field and update the keyboard action. OK, and that's it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to see more videos like this one. Thank you.